Welcome to The Jennifer Sheehan Show. I'm Jennifer. I would love to connect with you. Go to thejenniferscheehanshow.com. Follow me on social media and feel free to ask questions and leave comments. Today's show is on God's power. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So I would love to introduce you to Pastor Jared Stevens. Hi, Pastor. Hi, thanks for having me, Jennifer. Thanks to have you here. So teaching pastor at Prestonwood Baptist Church. Oh my gosh. So I've been going to Prestonwood Baptist Church for close to 18 years. I think a couple of months, it'll be 18 years. Wow, so and I've you've got been to be by a year. By a year. <laughs> yeah, I'm going into my 20th year. So 19 years there, started out as an intern and then worked with college and young single students and then been serving as the teaching pastor for the last 10. So. I love it. And you know what? I know you don't always get feedback from the congregation, but let me tell you what. One of the reasons I am who I am is because of your teaching. Oh, thank you. And Thanks I mean, you that. have poured into me and you've really taught me what it is to be humble because here you are and how many members do we have? 50,000? Getting there, <laughs> yes, very close. So many thousands of people and you still get on that stage and one of my favorite things that you said, one of your sermons was on being intentional. Mm. And I've been actually using that for many, many years, telling people to be intentional, being kind and nice and, and how they treat people and acting like a Christian, not just saying you're a Christian. Sure, so important, isn't it? I mean, somebody, somebody once said that uh, you're the only sermon that people will ever hear, your life, and so to live it out. Uh, really is so very important. Right, and you do that, and you are so humble and so kind, and you know, uh, I love hearing Pastor Graham, don't get me wrong, I've been going there for a long time. Sure, he's the but, best. But then every once in a while you get up there and they said, okay, Jared Stevens coming, like, yay, this is going to be good. <laughs> well, thanks for saying so, that. So thank you. So you were born and raised in Louisiana. I was, Bossier City, uh, kind of next to Shreveport, about three hours uh, east of here of Dallas, and uh, yeah, great family and great childhood growing up. Right, and so your parents were Christians? They were. They led by example. Talk about living the message out. My dad was my hero. Uh, back in the day, we had uh, what they called RAs, kind of the Awana program, the children's program my of the day. My son did Awana. And, yeah, and so my dad was my leader, and uh, mom, very involved in the church, and so I, I tell people they didn't just bring me to church and drop me off. They led me to church, and so it was a really great home environment for me. My dad to this day is my hero and I love, love him. Yeah. I love that you said that they led you. They didn't just bring you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, church was very important to them. They were both uh, made decisions for Christ when they were young, grew up in uh, that kind of atmosphere, and so I really have a legacy of faith passed on from my great-grandparents to my grandparents to my mom and dad, so really grateful for that testimony. Wow, I love that. Just what God's done with you just puts me in awe of Him, yeah. of where you come from, and, and getting up and telling your testimonial at church was very powerful because I didn't know that until recently. Yeah, absolutely. I tell people, you know, for me, I look at my life and I feel like I'm on third base and know that I didn't hit a triple, right? <laughs> uh, God put me there, and of course, Pastor Graham has been so good to me and, and really am humbled and honored uh, to be able to do what I get to do every single day. I wake up to this day uh, when I pull into the church parking lot, I think, God, what are you doing? I can't believe I get to do this. I mean, I've, I've sensed a call to ministry since I was 17 years old. Wow. I trusted Christ when I was 11, uh, right. August the 3rd, 1989. Uh, as a preteen camper, I can remember the pastor standing up, and you know how it is, Jennifer, when uh, God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, is kind of reading your mail, and you know He's talking right to <laughs> he you. He spoke through you many yeah, times, right well, to I'm me. Well, <laughs> I'm telling you, I know how it is, and because uh, He was speaking to my heart as an 11-year-old, and the invitation was given, and it's a decision that I've never regretted, uh, trusting in Christ. And you know, my dream was to play college football. That's what I really? wanted to do. I wanted to I coach high that. school football and then play college football. And I would have played college football had any coach <laughs> asked me to, but nobody <laughs> did, Jennifer. And so when I was 17, uh, I sensed this call to ministry. And I tell you, when, when I was studying the Bible to teach it for the first time, my student pastor asked me to, uh, to teach. And so I was studying to, to preach the Bible for the first time. And it was just like God's truth jumping off the page and into my heart. And I knew at right. that moment, this is what you're going to do right. with the rest of your life. And so I really do. It blows me away thinking back to as a 17-year-old, that simple call uh, that God whispered in my heart to the ministry to now uh, being able to right. serve the great people of Prestonwood at a church like this, the right. impact that it has in this community and around the world. 
uh, it truly is a humbling thing. Right. Isn't it? I mean, I remember when I prayed to receive Christ as my Savior, seventh grade church camp. Yeah. And then every time I go to church, they would be like, do you want to rededicate? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, sure. I can't even tell you how many times I rededicated Absolutely. myself. Absolutely. Because I was like, well, let's just make sure. Yeah, do you know that you know that you know that you know? I did until you put it like that. No, yeah. Uh, I've been there. I just loved him. I've always loved him since seventh grade and even having such a hard childhood myself. Um, I just would run to him at such a young age and just loved him so much. And, you know, I never thought, I remember when I was doing my radio show about a year ago and I told God, cause it was business to business. And, um, I told God, you know, if I could just talk about you all day long, I would love to do that. Little did I know he's going to give me a TV show. Isn't that true? I mean, the Bible <laughs> says that God gives us the desires of our heart. And I really believe that when you're seeking after him and following him, I think that's a promise from scripture right. that he will give us the well, desires of our heart. I think we have we have a purpose. He gives us a purpose. And you know what, right now having this TV show, I know that I can feel it. It's the most fulfilled I've ever felt in my whole entire life yeah. that I know that I'm exactly where he's been training me all these years to be right now. It's a good place to be, right in the middle of God's will. It is so great. I love it. So Preston Wood, then you've got um, your children. You've been married how long now? Been married for 17 years and have four little girls. So they're not so <laughs> little anymore. <laughs> well, I tried for a boy and God gave me two more girls. So uh, we're done. Uh, done. And they're not so little anymore. 14, 11, and two sevens. And I tell people I'm the president of my own sorority house, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Love those girls. They've got me wrapped. I love and, it. And uh, they're how great, long have great you been blessing. Married? 17 years. Oh, 17 yeah, years. So my wife Debbie and I, we met at the church. Church and, oh, so uh, you did? You met at Prestonwood? Yeah, I, I, tell pe that. I tell people Prestonwood has been very, very good to me. Right, gave uh, your not, wife. That's right, gave me my wife, my, uh, of course, my job. I uh, love the church and, and love my wife. Best gift outside of salvation that God's oh, ever I given me it. is my Next wife. Next month, Debbie. I hit 21 years. That's amazing. And you know, the only reason I'm still happily married is Jesus Christ is the rock of my marriage. I tell people all the time, I don't know how you can get through. I don't know how, you, you know, it's hard enough as two Christians, how anyone uh, continues to have a marriage without Christ at the center. I don't, know how, I don't know how it happens. Absolutely. Well, we're going to go back a little into your past and the horrible crime that I think was committed against you. So uh, just quickly, you were in, how old were you? Eight years old? Eight years old. Mm -hmm. Eight years old. And at eight years old, um, there was a t-ball team. I guess it was the all-star team. Yeah, a little league team. Uh, I tell people, I share a secret. Uh, when I was 19, and we'll get into this maybe in the next segment, that I'd never share with anybody else. And uh, it happened at eight, Little League team. And, uh, and it was God, the all-star amazing team everyone wanted to yeah, be Yeah, the coach that everybody wanted to have. Wow. So we're going to be right back in the next segment. We're going to talk about um, something that a child should never have to go through. We'll be right back. I've always believed that trust is one of the greatest compliments someone can receive. When our clients trust our team to handle one of their largest financial decisions they'll ever make, we take that very seriously. Having been in the business for over 36 years, I know that trust does not come easily. It has to be earned. Our team is committed to providing the best real estate service possible with the ultimate goal of having a seamless transaction and as little stress as possible. Let us show you why we are the best in the business. God placed on my heart 12 years ago to write a book of my life story. I said, no way. First of all, I don't want my painful past out to the public. Second of all, I'm a horrible speller. And third of all, I don't have the desire or time to write a book. He said, if it inspires one person, is it worth it to you then? I said yes and started writing my book two years ago. My book is the life story of me being born and raised in Southern California to a bipolar alcoholic mother that was married six times. My mother physically and mentally abused me my whole life. Then I joined the United States Army right out of high school. I spent four years in the Army, one year in Iraq, weapons specialist. This book will inspire you. I am so happy to come from where I've come to be where I am today. You can purchase Painful Victories on my website at thejennifersheehanshow.com. Today's extraordinary feat, Chris climbs stairs. This may look easy, but with severe back pain, it's impossible. Dr. Stephen Courtney and his team at Advanced Spine Center offer exceptional orthopedic care for neck and back pain. For more information on the latest advancements in minimally invasive spine surgery, call today, 972-499-5457. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. 
Okay, Pastor Jared Stevens, tell us what happened when you, how old were you again? Uh, between the ages of 8 and 12, I tell people I carried a secret, uh, really for all my life until I was a freshman in college, 19 years of age. Mm -hmm. I decided to tell us this secret that I was had been sexually abused between those ages of 8 and 12 by a little league coach. Wow. So what was that team like? All-star team? Yeah, the coach uh, that uh, did the abuse was a coach that all the parents wanted their kids on. He coached the all-star team. Usually his team was the winning team. And with my family being sports oriented, my dad usually had to split time between coaching either my team or my brother's team. And so when he was coaching my brother's team, I would end up on his. And uh, that's when the abuse happened. He would take a group of us. It was always a group of boys. We would stay the night at his house or he had a lake house. And uh, that's when the abuse would occur. Wow. And so you have a group, so parents would probably feel like, okay, this is safe because there's a group of you boys yeah, together. Yeah, they thought power in numbers, right? And it was such a different day uh, than it is today in regards to sexual abuse and the culture uh, of what's taking place. There was just, you know, I think back then a more trusting culture. I remember our parents having a uh, conversation amongst themselves. Is this okay? Well, sure, there's power in numbers. If, if he's, your kid's going, our kids are going. And so there was always a group of us. And again, all of our parents were very active and engaged in our life. So it wasn't like I had this horrible home life uh, where my parents weren't um, looking after me and shepherding right. me in the right places to go. Right. So at this um, lake house, you guys did skiing and it was just Yeah, it was just fun a fun place to go, right? He would take us uh, water skiing and uh, we'd stay up late playing cards and oftentimes it involved doing things that you shouldn't do, watching movies we shouldn't be watching, things like that. Uh, but it was just out from underneath our parents' care and we thought, hey, this is a you know, really cool coach, good fun to be around. And so we always had those things uh, for us to do. So. Right. Did you know if any of the other boys were being um, sexually abused? We did not know. Uh, it's not something that we talked about, obviously. For me, it was one of those things where uh, you, there was so much shame involved with it and guilt right. uh, that I never said anything. I was scared that if I did tell my parents, what would they do? Uh, I, 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 so I really didn't want to bring it up to my friends. I was embarrassed about it. All those things that are revolved around sexual abuse kind of kept me silent about it. So no, never told a soul. Wow. I can't imagine how that made you feel at such a young age. Yeah, it makes you feel dirty. It makes you feel embarrassed, shamed, all those things, uh, which is why I try to tell my story as often as I can uh, because I found that it gives so many people hope because I've never not once shared my story of what God's done in using the abuse uh, to bring glory to Him ultimately. I've never not once shared that story where somebody had come up and said, you know what, that happened to me. I've never told anybody till right now. And wow. so I found that there's great freedom in being able to share it uh, because it, it gives a little bit of hope to others who may be struggling with the same type of thing. Right. And so it ended up being how many children did they think, how many boys were Well, uh, the coach was the, uh, he was very uh, established in our uh, town of Bossier City. He was the president of the Bossier Parish Police Jury. He had a lot of influence. It coached a ton of teams. And so when I came forward at 19, uh, uh, there was a lot of speculation as to how many uh, boys this uh, coach had abused. And so uh, the authorities don't know. Uh, they think it was upwards to 100, 200 kids. We wow. had another young man came forward when I was 19 that was 11 years old. We got phone calls from families that uh, knew their son had been abused before me. So we knew it was going on before me. We knew it was going on after me, all those years in between. So we really don't know the exact number, but we speculate it was, wow. it was quite a bit. So you don't tell anyone. You go off to college. Yeah. Then you said you come back from college and you see the coach in a truck with two young boys. Yeah, that was the turning point for me. I was serving as an intern in my home church and the Lord was just working in my life at the time and I was driving down a, a road and it was just a two lane highway and I can remember seeing uh, that coach coming as I was going the other way. Uh, his truck very familiar and I remember uh, just passing him and when we passed I saw two boys in the car. And so I knew right then that God man, something's got to be done. Just sensed it in it. my spirit that something's got to be done. And so that's when it really, the rustling really began with going, I'm going to tell this deep, dark secret that I've never told anyone in all of my life. God, how on earth am I going to do this? Right. I can't even imagine. Yeah. 
We're going to be right back in our next segment, and we're going to talk about how Pastor Jarrett Stevens confronted the Little League coach that sexually abused him. I've always believed that trust is one of the greatest compliments someone can receive. When our clients trust our team to handle one of their largest financial decisions they'll ever make, we take that very seriously. Having been in the business for over 36 years, I know that trust does not come easily, it has to be earned. Our team is committed to providing the best real estate service possible with the ultimate goal of having a seamless transaction and as little stress as possible. Let us show you why we are the best in the business. It takes a village to raise a kid and change the world. But today, we are more disconnected than ever. But our children still have the same problems. No self-esteem, no social skills, and lack of grit. As a teacher, the most difficult challenge we face is to teach kids who see no value in education. Ethos Village is a digital tool that engages kids, parents, and teachers so we can engage parents and kids in a fun and entertaining environment. And this great curriculum is highlighted by experienced parents, professional athletes, and celebrities that tell the real life stories. Stories of struggle and success that show kids, parents, and teachers the sky's the limit. Visit www.ethosvillage.com. Join the village, Ethos Village. Today's extraordinary feat, Chris climbs stairs. This may look easy, but with severe back pain, it's impossible. Dr. Stephen Courtney and his team at Advanced Spine Center offer exceptional orthopedic care for neck and back pain. For more information on the latest advancements in minimally invasive spine surgery, call today, 972-499-5457. Imagine a global movement of people coming together to feed the hungry, to serve the poor, to celebrate. That day is coming. The Jennifer Sheehan TV show is real people with real stories of redemption, miracles, and overcoming. This is a TV Christian show that gives God all the glory. The show is a 501c3 nonprofit, giving back 100% of donations towards the Jennifer Sheehan TV show. We also partner with Operation Care International, serving and supporting the homeless. In a world that is spreading fake hope, only Jesus Christ and the Holy Bible have the supernatural power to change people and their circumstances. Production for the Jennifer Sheehan TV show is extensive and we need partners to keep it on air. If you believe in our cause, please prayerfully consider to be a partner for a $20 donation a month or more. May God bless you. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. So, Pastor Jared, what happened when you confronted him? Well, first you had to tell your parents, right? Yeah, so, uh, you know, really wrestling with the Lord, uh, know that He's speaking to my heart on bringing what has happened in my life, this dark, dark thing that has happened in my life into the light, and just knew uh, compelled to, I've got to share this with someone. And so God had put a mentor in my life, a student pastor uh, that had walked alongside of me for a number of years that I really trusted, and I called him and uh, just said, hey, I need to come by your office and just need to share with you something that uh, has happened in my life and just needs to be private, me and you. And uh, he said, sure, come on down. And I kind of made a deal with the Lord that when I share this secret, uh, God, this is bigger than me. Right. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to trust that whatever the person I tell uh, informs me to do, tells me to do, I'm going to trust that's from you because I, I, it's too big for me to try to wrap my mind around and my arms around. So whatever this person tells me, I'm going to do it. And whatever the next person tells me, I'm going to do that and just receive it as being from you. And so uh, I called my mentor, said, uh, can I come by? He said, of course. And I can remember walking up to his office, it was upstairs. And, and I can remember just my heart beating because I'm about to share this story that I've never told anyone. Right. And uh, I proceed to tell him, and he was so wise. He said, Jarrett, you're 19 years old. Uh, you're an adult. You don't have to tell anybody this. If this is where you want to leave it, then that's fine. He said, but I really want to encourage you to tell your parents. 
and that was the one thing I didn't want to do right. uh, because I just knew it would break their heart. It would right. break their heart as close as we were as a family. And But I, again, I'd made a deal with the Lord. God, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what you tell me to do through this next person. And so uh, I can remember it was a Wednesday. I leave uh, my mentor's office and I go into a little prayer room in our church, Jennifer, and there's a, there's a scripture you quoted from Romans chapter 8, verse 28 at the start of this segment. And there's a verse in Romans 8 that says, When we don't know what to pray for, the Spirit intercedes for us. And uh, it was one of those moments. I go into this little prayer room and I lay flat on the ground. And I don't even know what to pray for. I can't believe I'm going to tell my parents this evening. Right. And stuff is happening so fast. And I just remember laying flat down on my face. And I couldn't even say a word. But I just... No, in that moment, I'm confident that the Spirit of God was praying for me in right. words that I couldn't even express. And I remember going to my parents uh, after church that evening and saying, Hey, I need y'all uh, to come home. I need to talk with you about something. I knew they knew something was up because that just wasn't us. They would go out to eat with a family, same family every Wednesday night. Right. I usually had events that I was going to. And so I know that made them nervous. And uh, I can still remember them pulling into my driveway at my house. And my student pastor was there with me. He had to said, I'll be there with you. And so we go into the living room. And uh, it's just like a setting that we're in right here. My mom uh, was sitting to my left. My dad was sitting to my right. And I pulled up the ottoman uh, in the middle of them. My student pastor sitting on the couch behind me. And I proceeded to tell them this secret that I'd carried all of my life. And I can just remember my mom. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, just broken hearted. She just started uh, crying, saying, my boy, my boy. And I can remember my dad uh, just kind of staring off into space. And I tell people, um, you know, uh, it was the best night's sleep that night that I'd ever had Aww. in my life because I finally off. told this story. You know, right. I'd finally gotten what is dark, brought into the light. It was the best night's sleep I, had, I can ever remember having but probably for my parents, the worst <laughs> right? night's sleep that they had ever had. Right. And so that began the process. And I, like I said, I, I was going to do police. what the next person was going to tell me to do. And that's what my mom and dad to uh, wanted to do. They wanted to go to the police. Uh, the chief of police uh, was a family friend of ours. His son had actually played on the same teams as oh. I did growing up. They knew who this coach was. Their son wasn't abused. Uh, but they knew who he was. And so I tell them on a Wednesday, on a Sunday night, the chief of police is in my house and I proceed to tell him everything. And he just said, Jarrett, we're going to get him. And uh, I didn't know what that meant, right. uh, but he said, we're going to get him. So you pray, you'd already forgiven him. Yeah, I'd forgiven him in my heart. Uh, you know, I'd worked through this from ages right. 8 to 12. And just as God had worked this call to ministry in my life and just progressed through the years, I had worked this forgiveness in my heart. Before and, you admitted it to your family. Yeah, I think so. I'd had all this time to process it. Right. And then the police say, Jarrett, we're going to get him. I didn't know what that meant. I was serving at my home church as an intern. And I got a call from him that said, hey, uh, we want you to go. Uh, under the wire and we want you to confront him and I said okay because I'd made a deal with the Lord whatever the next person <laughs> says right. and so now the police is saying we want you to go under wire and so my deal that I'd made uh, with the Lord I said okay I'll do this uh, but my heart going into it was I'm gonna get the information that you need uh, but I'm going in to personally forgive him that's what's gonna give me the uh, power and the courage to go in because I really see it as a David versus Goliath thing. I didn't know what he was going to do. He was an outdoorsman. I knew he had guns in the hall. I just didn't know. Right. Uh, and so I was going in to forgive him. And that's exactly what happened. Right. And you forgave him. Yeah. And then he got sentenced to how long? 40 years? Yeah, he was sentenced to uh, 40 years in prison, eligible for parole after 12. And uh, again, an 11 year old boy had come forward. All this was in the papers. It was very public news. Right. And so during that process, an 11 year old boy had come forward and uh, he's the one that really uh, put him in prison because my statute of limitations was up. Yeah, right. And so uh, we were ready to take it to court, but uh, I didn't want that because of the courage of that 11 year old. I didn't want uh, to put him on the stand if he wasn't ready. And so his family, they decided to make a plea. And so with my testimony, with his testimony, he was uh, sentenced to 40 years in prison, eligible for parole after 12. And then there were some other things that he had to do in, in order to, to well, for this plea bill to go down. And then he got physically castrated by yes, the state of Louisiana. Uh, yes. And so, uh, again, wow. it was, uh, you know, very public. And 
um, there was an outcry uh, just because of all the abuse that, right. you know, all the kids that he had coached in the cases that he fought. So uh, he was sentenced to prison and uh, that's exactly what took place. Uh, he went to jail and um, uh, I believe that in giving grace, but I also believe in justice. Right. And so I believe justice was So you went back to served. his um, hearing. He had a hearing to get out early, and you went back saying that he yeah. should serve his sentence. Yeah, went back and just said, uh, you know, I, I just believe uh, he should serve his sentence, no more, no less. And mm -hmm. he was denied parole, and then eventually, uh, yeah, so eventually he served was his released. 40 years? Uh, served uh, for about 15, I believe. Okay, 15 years yeah. and was castrated by the state and, yeah. and justice. And so I'm not happy that you went through that. I'm sorry you went that, through sure. that, but I'm so glad that you're able to use this and, and help others. And then also you have a book here. Yes, uh, The Mountains Are Calling. I write about uh, what we've talked about today, the situation in chapter three, uh, where I relate Elijah going up to Mount Carmel. We all know the story of Elijah calling down the gods, and we love that whole picture of, of the prophet of God going up to the mountaintop. But he also, before he went to the mountaintop, had to go to a place called Cherith and Zarephath, which means Cherith is to mean cut down, Zarephath to melt or to smelt. And so my story is, listen, oftentimes before you get to the mountaintop, you have to go to the places of brokenness, and I write about it, and the mountains are calling. I love it. Thank you so, so sure. much for Thanks coming for on my me. show and sharing, and thank you for inspiring others and pouring into me all these years. A lot of who I am is because of you, so I just... I appreciate you so much for sharing. Thank Thanks for you. having me. Thank you. We will be right back. I would love to share with you how you too can experience God's power. I have always believed that trust is one of the greatest compliments someone can receive. When our clients trust our team to handle one of their largest financial decisions they'll ever make, we take that very seriously. Having been in the business for over 36 years, I know that trust does not come easily, it has to be earned. Our team is committed to providing the best real estate service possible with the ultimate goal of having a seamless transaction and as little stress as possible. Let us show you why we are the best in the business. Today's extraordinary feat, Chris climbs stairs. This may look easy, but with severe back pain, it's impossible. Dr. Stephen Courtney and his team at Advanced Spine Center offer exceptional orthopedic care for neck and back pain. For more information on the latest advancements in minimally invasive spine surgery, call today 972-499-5457. Welcome back. You too can have that power from God. If you haven't prayed to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, pray with me. Jesus, I know you died on the cross for my sin. You rose again on the third day. Forgive me for my sin. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Tune in next week. We have an amazing show on hope. See you next week on The Jennifer Sheehan Show.